So I'm going to show you guys real quick how to um, install Windows 8 on Windows Azure. And um, to do this, you first have to um, create your um, Windows 8 image file. And um, create this. the best thing to create this is on a Hyper-V virtual uh, machine locally on your Windows 8. And then you um, prepare the image to you as like as you like it and in the end if you're done you have to convert the image it's probably going to be a VHX VHDX file so you have to convert it to a VHD file and um, so when you when you have your image file and it's a VHD it's converted it's like let's say about 10 gigabyte of size you got you want to upload this to your Azure profile so to do this of course you need the Azure PowerShell tools and there are many tutorials out there that actually show you how to how to get there and how to um, install the Azure SDK and how to get to these tools this tool especially you need to upload is the CS upload dot exe and this you get with the Azure SDK 1.8 for this so and and here it's just basically yeah I have to figure out what kind of um, blob storage account you have. You can create one on your own, and, and you also have to specify how your image is going, it, your image name is going to be. So here we have Windows EMG Win8 V6 VHD file, and um, we just have it locally on the H drive. So yeah, it's a 10 gig file, so you're gonna have to be prepared. Depending on your connection, it's going to take up to 40 minutes to upload the whole entire file. I'm not gonna do this here because I already have done this, and um, and it's it's on Azure, and you take you can see it in um, storage, in your storage group, and um, in you have there you have the the containers where you then can find all your files that you have uploaded so this one is it it's here and um, from this image file you then well create a new machine and it's um, you go yeah just create a new virtual machine from gallery you go to my disks and you select your image then yeah you you're gonna kind of spec specify your name you want, and um, yeah, I usually use some um, the small size of core, so I mean it doesn't eat too much compute because I mean it's it's only on the test account. Um, the DNS name I'm just gonna put the same, and I'm gonna add it to my already created network, which we already also can find a couple of documentaries out there and. Um, that's that show you how to to create this, and um, yeah, next thing you do is um, click next, and um, the virtual machine is getting created with your um, um, VHD file that you just uploaded. Um, this is going to take about ten minutes, and this is also something I'm not going to do to show to, because I've already done it, and it takes some time. What you then want to do is. Um, to connect to your machine so you want to go to virtual machines and um, select the, the machine you've uploaded and um, just hit connect and then um, well you hopefully can access your virtual machine so what I encountered a lot of problems was um, that I couldn't access Windows 8 because um, the firewall was on and especially the remote desktop services were um, not activated so be sh make sure when you prepare your client that you also activate um, Windows desktop services for Windows 8 and so well having the, the system booted up you then want to um, um, install all your software that you need and um, prepare it and um, then you're just going to run sysprep on that machine and you, you already know you're going to run this on Azure and from there um, you, yeah, you're just going to choose um, generalize and very important shut down so because you don't want the system to boot up again after you've shut down and um, well this takes another 10 minutes or so and when you're done with that you just gonna capture 
the image and this you would do here um, actually at this moment in this view I don't have a shutdown VM but when you have a VM that was shut down you can see you see here a capture then it's um, it's active so you just can capture it and there you can state that um, you want to capture it where I have a screenshot of that here so yeah that you um, I have run sysprep on the virtual machine and then your virtual machine gets deleted from um, that, that, that that's the yeah, but that was only your let's say golden image which is your master image anyhow um yeah then um if you want to go further and and this is actually what was my main approach was to to launch multiple virtual machines um with scripts so um here is a uh, the ISE of PowerShell and uh, this is basically a very easy script that I ma mainly copied from from online sources. What you really want to do is like you're just going to specify your name. You're going to specify your domain controller, and the domain controller is actually um, um already prepared, is already running, and is already set up. So uh, otherwise, you cannot join the client to the domain. So uh, what else? So yeah, here you specify the affinity group, your network. The size of the VM again, and um, yeah, here you have the back end of the subnet where you where you're gonna define and everything set. So you just pretty much just launch the script, and um, if if you get got everything right, um, yeah, the, um, the new virtual machine is created and there is the um, asynchronous deployment process that just gets initiated so of course now you you just have to be patient a bit because um, the image that you've created after running this prep that you captured is now your um, um, helping image so from this one you, you're gonna create your further or your, your um, future Windows 8 clients um, this here is also a modified version where you just you create a simple for each loop around your um, script and then you technically just can launch um, 10 or 20 or I mean there's a limit in Azure but I mean you just could really easily deploy 10 VM machines real quick so let's go back here and, and see if it already um, if it's already provisioning Sometimes you have to refresh because it's not um, loading it. Yeah, there it is. And um, yeah, obviously, um, it's it's now it's still in progress of um, retrieving an IP. And um, also, I mean, Azure does inject the computer name and does the the domain join. Oh yes, this I kind of forgot to mention. Um, here, I mean, we also do the the domain join, so we have a domain specified and the administrator, and um, as well, like I defined a, an op, uh, an O where um where I put in the the joint clients. So this has the reason because I um really wanted to make sure I can show you this. This is the the, the domain controller of um of my network, and um, this is basically the the Active Directory users and computer group and this this is where my, my clients get joined and um, and I have I've defined a special group policy that I then can configure and centrally manage the clients so yeah a problem I encountered for instance if you have regular users that want to connect to your remote desktops um, with a remote desktop service you technically cannot um, they cannot access it because they're not in the again not in the group of remote desktop users so what you really want to do is um, um, create the group um, let's call it just RDP let's make it a global group and a security group and in this group you're just gonna add um, domain users and let's just add domain admins as well apply so you already defined the group I mean you can also be more um, distinguished with the, uh, or, um, you can more specialize which kind of users you want to have in this group and now yeah we um, 
that can show you where you have to um, edit your group policy to actually uh, make um, this group being in the local groups of the client because otherwise it doesn't work or at least I didn't find out a way how to make it work so here you just have to create the group and you want to update the group because it's an already existing local group and you call it remote desktop users I guess okay. and in here you add the group RDP that we just created okay so this is this is all what you want to do you just want to add the group that you created in Active Directory to the local machine because that's how you can then manage the groups and assign other groups to this group without having to modify the client's group policy anymore that's it so um, now as we have um, the client policy linked to the client objects and we get the new clients joined in the client thing they automatically get the right um, GPO supplied and still is and the host name is not yet assigned so we just have to wait a little bit longer meanwhile I just show you like yeah there's basically a Windows 8 machine and um, I mean I just have put some Office 2013 on it's it's pretty it's pretty fast I mean it's even considering it's just one core and um, yeah it's 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 really it's, it's it's fast and and also like the file transfer just um, file transfer is also quite fast just copy oh, how big is this file 600 megabyte it's on the on another server it's on the file server so I'm just gonna copy it down locally to my temporary storage drive and well yeah it's like 86 megabyte per second that's pretty fast so I mean it's like seamless so meanwhile I powered up five more machines no six actually with this script with a little loop so um, each time it provisions a new machine and um, the whole thing took about 20 minutes and um, as you can see we have 10 machines running and they're all provisioned so I want to connect to um, a provision client now therefore I create a new user okay and you want to add this user to the group RDP that we created because like this he can remote access the client with his remote desktop so now let's try if we can log on with this new user on a newly provisioned machine I'm gonna use number 12 okay let's see how long it takes to actually um, create the new profile initialize everything because it's the first time we a user logs on to this machine okay there we go it took one and a half minutes to actually load the windows screen but now we are on the machine and probably there will be the network drive yes indeed so when um, this is a normally domain joint machine and um, works very well I have now 10 domain joint Windows 8 clients on my account and it's actually only a test account so the whole thing was to test what kind of what the new Azure infrastructure as a service can offer and I'm pleased with the results thanks for watching